Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I'm back again with Kelsey. That's me. Yay, you're here. You're here to help us rant. <laughs> yeah, because we're angry, I think. Definitely annoyed, I will say, because you and I have been collecting video games for a long time, many different cities, states, even countries, and we've often ran into things that are kind of just annoying and sort of red flags that people should look out for when they're trying to buy games, right? Yeah, and full disclosure, I co-own a game store, right. um, so you know I'm going to be a little bit biased here, um, but I'm also a collector myself, yeah. and you know these are things that I try to look out for and try to make sure that, you know, I, not everyone's a bad guy for doing this stuff, but it's stuff you should probably keep in mind when you're shopping. Starting with number one, this happened to me actually, and it's really annoying. I was trying to buy a game that was in a case, asked them to, to take it out, and walked up to the register, and they changed the price on me at the register. Yeah, this is so weird to me because, so just for the like store owner background, let's say you bought a game and you put it out for sale at $40, um, but lo and behold, you know, something crazy happened, a new hack was found with it or something, and now that game has ballooned to $80, and you know, you wanna charge $80 now instead of 40. But the thing is, when you purchased that game as the game store, you didn't purchase it yeah. based on it being yeah. an $80 game, you purchased it based on it being a $40 game. Yeah. You're already making a profit with the $40. Oh, and by the way, as the customer, I know that, or at least assume that that would be the case that you were making money. And so I was pretty annoyed. And, you know, I, I'm not proud, but I ended up buying it anyways because I wanted it. But the, the price was significant and it left a bad taste in my mouth. Actually, when I left there, I was like, I, I, to be honest, I haven't been back. Yeah, and that's the thing is, you know, yeah. a, sometimes even as a game store owner, you're gonna end up accidentally taking a loss or two, but a good game store will just take that loss every once in a while because it's a really bad service experience to yeah. have the price changed on you. So, they don't do that too at the grocery store. It, can you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine if you were, yeah, if you picked up something like a, a thing of milk and you took it up and it was twice as much at the register? No one would put up with that. The second one also happened to me as well, and it, it was so annoying, and that is that the store had a bunch of 3DS games, actually a bunch of different systems, and they had printed off on their like home printer like fake covers, which is not a a big deal, but they were charging full price. Yeah, so that by itself isn't a bad thing if it's just a right. printed cover. I mean, it might, you know, some people might not care if it's yeah. the official one on the shelf, but you shouldn't be paying the complete in box price yeah. if it's not complete in box. And so I asked them, I'm like, why are you doing that? And their answer was exactly that. Well, most people don't care, but I was like, well, but I care. Yeah. The other thing too is, is that it was 3DS games. And so the, the, Spines looked close enough to where I had to pull them all out individually to look to see which ones were fake, which again was so annoying. <laughs> I've never been back. <laughs> that's gonna that's, be a that's theme. The, yeah, that's the theme for all of these. It is. Number three is when game stores don't have any prices on anything. Now, I don't think this is like unethical necessarily, it's just a really bad customer experience. Yeah, because essentially it ruins the impulse buy. Because, you know, it, it, if if I go in there and I look at a game and I and I have to check to see if it's, you know, what the price is online, which is most likely gonna be pricecharting.com, then I know that pretty much every other game there is just gonna be pricecharting.com and, 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 and there's not gonna be any deals to be made there or well, anyth anything to be found. Yeah, and even outside of deals, like it's just not fun to sit there and look yeah. every price up on your phone. I mean, well, that, yeah, that was my point is that I'm not gonna do that for. Right, you know. I mean, there might be a game that I'm mildly interested in and I'm interested in it if it's like, you know, a $20 or less game and maybe I don't know if it goes for $20 or less, but right. I'm not gonna sit there and look up every single game. Um, so it's just a bad customer experience yeah. when you have that. Yeah. And again, these are the kinds of things that they, they don't fly at the grocery store. I'm gonna keep saying that. Um, you it's know, true. Yeah. you just, you gotta have prices on things. Um, well, and yes, I know it's a lot of work to price things, but. And, and so let me ask you this. So the store told me that the reason why they didn't do that is because they didn't wanna have to have employees go around repricing stuff all the time. I mean, that goes back to what I said earlier, though, is that every once in a while you are going to take a loss on something. You know, yeah. you may have bought it thinking it was a $10 game and now it's a $20 game and oops, your customer gets a deal. 
Oh no, <laughs> your customer got a deal and well, left happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, but isn't repricing part of a retail store anyways, yeah. right? I mean, because I used to work at Safeway. We did that, I think, like once a week or something like that. Absolutely. Like you had to, right? And it's really, I mean, it, it depends on the store. Not every store is running with like a fancy point of sale system or inventory system or anything. So. I, I totally get that mm -hmm. it is like an annoying task to do and go uh, recheck prices every once in a while. But at the end of the day, I mean, if you bought the game for X amount of money and it went up by $10, you're still selling it for a profit. And then you just have to every once in a while look around and see, okay, is I, you know, have, we haven't sold a copy of this in five weeks. Maybe it's not priced right. Maybe yeah. I can take a look at it again, but. Or, or maybe just try to focus on the really expensive stuff yeah. if that's or like you're always mentioning like you know pokemon games maybe not necessarily expensive but they move quickly so yeah. you do you do you do want to follow the market right totally yeah that makes totally sense but no prices that's that's annoying yeah number four is when they won't let you open any games to verify that they're legit Especially when they're expensive. Yes. Right? And there's really no reason to do this. Um, obviously, opening a sealed game is a different story, but, you know, opening a cartridge to verify that it's a legitimate version of the cartridge is just common sense, and it doesn't, like, affect the value of the game or anything by yeah. opening it. It's just pulled together with two screws. It's going to go back <laughs> together the same way. Um, that's always should set off your alarm bells a little bit because it makes you wonder if they're trying to hide something. Right. And even if that game's legit, you know, why, why is that policy in place? That's true. And, and, you know, you're not opening it, like, three times a day. Right. right? So it's, like, probably once a week or something like that? Or, yeah, I can't see that being an issue, so... That's annoying. Yep. So another thing to look out for is when game stores put stickers, like real sticky stickers, right on the cardboard or right on the label. So now, annoying. Stickers come in all sizes and shapes and amounts of stickiness, and sometimes there are some stickers that are, you know, maybe not quite as, as damaging or as bad. Um, but really, anytime it's directly on like the cardboard of something, that's or sometimes a even no on the plastic. Like GameStop is the worst at this. Sometimes I don't know what it is. Oh, like, they put it on the actual. I, I can't. There's no amount of fingernail I can get to to pull those off. It's so annoying. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen a game store other than GameStop do it where they put it directly on the cover art. <sighs> but yeah, you guys, that's pretty terrible. You guys do it right. I mean, uh, you know. Props to you, like, yeah, I know, it's like, that is <laughs> that's something I really love about your store is like, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know how you do it. Yeah, so we just use uh, sticky note backs. So there's like a, a thing that's basically just the sticky part of a sticky note, but it's a whole roll of that. Mm -hmm. um, and so we'll put the price stickers and all of the, you know, label tags and everything on that if we're gonna put it onto a cartridge or cardboard or something like that. That way it comes off, you know, a sticky note's not gonna hurt anything. So um, that'll come right off. Um, sometimes they even fall off, which is kind of annoying because then, then it doesn't have a price on yeah. it on accident. But um, yeah, so that's a good thing to do. A lot of other stores, um, and we'll do this sometimes too. They'll just like, you know, wrap it in some plastic or something like that and then put yeah. the thing on top. Stickers don't really hurt like the cartridge part of a cartridge, you know, not the label, just the regular plastic. There are totally places you can put a sticker safely, but you definitely don't want people doing it directly on a cardboard box or directly on a label. That's bad news. Especially when games are getting just so expensive too, and a lot of collectors like us care about the packaging. Yeah, please do better, do better. And then finally, Sometimes when you go into a retro gaming store, they may have a bunch of games out and some of them might be reproductions and they don't tell you that. Yeah, so, you know, technically speaking, all reproductions are not legal to sell in the US. That doesn't necessarily mean it's unethical as long as you're marking it that way. You know, right. if you're selling, um, you know, a repro copy of a Pokemon game that you can get on AliExpress for $4 and you are marking it at 40 and not putting any signage on it, I would say that's pretty unethical. Yeah. So, you know, making sure that if they are selling reproductions, you can make your own decision on whether or not you think reproductions in general are okay. Um, well, and I think for me as a collector, the really big issue here is that if I'm paying full price- Or and even- or, substantial price at all yeah, you know? yeah or and i don't know that and i think that you know in the in the future maybe i want to turn around and sell it or something like that it's like and then i find out then that it's a fake 
that would be very annoying. Yeah. <laughs> that would be like buying a car and thinking you're driving around in this car and only to find out, no, it's actually something completely different on the inside. Like yeah. you, that would be unacceptable for sure. So, so you definitely want to make yeah. sure that if your local game store is selling reproduction stuff, they at the very least are pricing it correctly and labeling it correctly so that you're not, uh, you know, buying something that you think is authentic yeah. only to find out way later. Yeah, totally. All right, guys. Well, that is some of the things that kind of annoy us when we are going out game hunting at retro gaming stores. But something tells me that the comments are going to be filled with lots of other things that are annoying as well. It's all <laughs> kinds of things to be annoyed about. Let it all out. <laughs> That's right. Let, let's, let's start a debate in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> so where can people find you on the internet? Uh, you can find me on Blue Sky. I'm at Kels Lewin Blue Sky Social. Um, I am on Instagram at Tentakels, uh, K-E-L-S at the end. Um, and I've got a book coming out from Boss Fight Books what? Uh, very soon. You're like an author. I, am, I think I am an author. Yeah. <laughs> very cool. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care.